passion they sang the hymns of praise to thee now I exalted our melody we raise. good evening everyone thank you for coming back for our Sunday evening service I hope that uh, you can hear well and um, and that most importantly that you are doing well it's good to see each and every well virtually see uh, everyone who is here so far um, like I said uh, I run about 20 seconds ahead of our stream and just want to take a look and I, I like doing this uh, of, of looking to see uh, who's on not taking attendance not uh, not taking roll, but just wanted to see who's on. Good to see you, of course, Brother Mike. Thanks for all that that you're doing, uh, running our social media and and all. Miss Sandy, good to see you. Miss Beverly, good to see you here tonight. Um, Maxine, good to see you. And I'm sure Paige and Chris are watching. So hello. Um, and let's see, Miss Jackie, good to see you. Um, so hello to Brother Jim and. Uh, JP, um, I'm trying to I'm trying to catch up with all who who may be watching. Miss Debbie, good to see you, um, and, uh, and I'm sure Brother Noah will watch this uh, sometime. But uh, to all who are watching, thank you for joining us for our Sunday evening service. Um, let's uh, let's pray, ask God's blessing. Uh, we'll have uh, another song tonight, and then we're going to get into um, our. our uh, our study of Philippians chapter 2. Lord, we thank you for this night. We thank you for those who have taken the time out of their evening to join us online. We ask today that you would help us to remember why we're here. And Lord, we ask you to bless all those who are even affected by this virus. Lord, for all the different needs and prayer requests that are on our heart, Lord, we pray that you would answer them according to your will and according to um, what is in your plan. Uh, Lord, we thank you that we can meet together. Lord, we pray for this uh, this time that we meet online. We pray that you would keep um, our minds and our hearts upon you. Uh, help us where we fail. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, again, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, again, um, hey, Miss Beverly, hey, Miss Linda, and uh, uh, good to see you. And we pray Brother Paul's um, doing uh, doing well uh, or doing better. We we praise God for the report from uh, from him earlier. I saw the Keens are on. Hey, Miss Janice. Hey, Brother uh, Brother Ken. Um, yep, Brother Noel. Good to see you for the Carols. Uh, Brother Ralph, Miss Carol, good to see you. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, I, I thank you for coming to our, our morning service day. I believe we had a wonderful service. Again, I want to thank Jordan for providing the music for us uh, so well this morning. I think he did a wonderful job and, and the video looked very good. Thank you so much also for uh, being so proactive uh, due to the, um, the, the some of the issues that we had this morning, I want to thank Mike and then now our our uh, new team of moderators who are going to look at the comments. Here, here's how I feel. We want our we want our message, our, our church, to, to be out there on Facebook and and uh, and we want anybody to listen in. Uh, but as long as they're being respectful, and so uh, we we we're going to handle that more. Um, more diligently and it was the first time that that's really ever happened and so uh thank you so much for for hanging in there i know it was a little a little strange there for a while but we're gonna we're gonna take care of that oh miss jeans there we're gonna do the elbow bump uh miss deidre how are you um, i was looking around all the pictures of you po of your posting of of what you're doing uh worshiping digitally and we we think that is neat uh i want i'm going to share some of those um on another service but i wanted to, to share one of my favorite internet pictures internet memes that are going around um 
this this one of my favorites now. Uh, it says just like that, all pastors are televangelists, and <laughs> I think I think that's that's pretty funny, and it almost almost feels true. What well, maybe uh, one of the what one of the televangelists uh, feel feels like again for announcements for the for the foreseeable. A future at least of April it looks like we're going to uh, be doing all digital content and so uh, th this is what um, this is just the way we're going to go however uh, we are, we're still doing um, essential duties uh, at the church and so we're not stopping our ministry our ministry as I mentioned this morning we're so thankful that the governor has viewed um, all over the state of Florida churches as essential uh, uh, essential business. Um, also, in uh, in terms of announcements, um, uh, let's uh, continue uh, giving, uh, filling out the cards. So, if you can have some cards filled out and and dropped off at the church, if anybody has an update, uh, please please give an update of how many more cards that we need and dropped off at at the church to give to Heartland Nursing Home. Again, just you can sign it your friend, no address or anything like that. Don't address it to anyone. So, uh, just just remember that we do uh, appreciate <laughs> that. And again, uh, no brotherhood, no sisters in spirit or business meeting. Uh, we can take care of um, if it's important or urgent business. We can handle it by phone. Um, there are some things we're doing at the church. Again, Miss Jean and the Sisters in Spirit are in contact. Brother Moore and uh, the Brotherhood, we're we're uh, in contact as well. So um, everything's still going on uh, well. Also, if you need something from us, we do have a digital connection card that you can fill out and just make sure that if you need something, you fill out that card. You get in contact with us. One thing that I'm working for for those who are unable. To live stream uh, those like I talked to brother Joe today had a great conversation with him uh, I know he's not able to live stream our services uh, I'm working on putting our services um, uh, on CD so they can at least listen to the sermons if they want um, uh, uh, so if you know somebody who would like CD copies of the sermons we are working on that and I'm also working on creating an audio podcast feed for uh, the audio of the sermons only during this time. So we're working on that. And uh, again, I love how the churches are coming together and finding ways to, to, spread, to spread the gospel. Uh, I want to bring another song uh, today. And um, let, let's uh, continue our worship with another song. And uh, again, we appreciate all the free resources and the music that's been given to various churches so we can worship digitally. the 
saints adore thee Casting down their golden crowns Around the glassy So we are back in a series of messages from the book of Philippians, and we've entitled this Living a Life Well Lived, and we'll be in Philippians chapter 2, and I just want to look at two verses tonight, and that is verse 12 and 13. So Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 and 13, uh, if you have your Bibles tonight. Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 and and 13. And again, we're in this series on living a life well lived. And Paul wrote to the Philippian church, and he was very, very connected to that church. Uh, there was a family type bond. Uh, this was a great church. This was a church that uh, really uh, would strive to honor the Lord in everything they did. Uh, they loved Paul. And Paul loved them. And Paul would pray often for this church. And as we've um, looked through this book of Philippians, he's talked about how all in all of everything in our life is living for Christ. He says in chapter 1, verse 21, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Verse 27 talks about living again. It talks about how we should let our conduct, our conversation, um, one translation says, our conduct be worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then he gives this idea of let it be worthy whether I am here or whether I'm not. And then Paul moves into this idea of the mind of Christ and what the mind of Christ really is all about. And then he goes from there to two great verses. Now, these two verses are connecting verses. Uh, they connect what is above verse 12. So that is chapter 2, verse 1 through 11, connects to verse 12 as a as a application of Paul's prior thought. We'll get to that in a second. In verse 13 then connects the rest of Paul's argument from chapter 2. You'll see it in just a minute. So tonight I really just want to concentrate on two very simple verses. I want to think through what Paul is saying. And again, I'd like to title this message to be continued. To be continued. And so if we would look in Philippians uh, chapter 2, verse 12 and 13, and it reads, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you, both to will and to do for his good pleasure. For it is God who works in you both to will 
and to do for his good pleasure. Lord, I ask as we look at your word for a few moments, apply the truths of your word to our lives. Help us to become more Christ-like. In Jesus' name, amen. So, we all have had the experience of watching a TV show and then at the end of the TV show, we get really engrossed in it, right? We get engrossed in this TV show and they're just about to reveal maybe uh, who the person, uh, it, who the enemy is in the story. Maybe it was one of those whodunits uh, episodes and then it says on the screen, to be continued, dot, dot, dot. Now, we don't like that because it cuts off us hearing the rest of the story. But it also is good news that lets us know that the story is not over. The story has not ended. That, that we will get a resolution one day because the story is going to continue. I like how, I don't know, you, you might not watch some of the new superhero movies, but at the end of the superhero movies, after the credits, they put a, a teaser. And it lets you know that, guess what, there's going to be another movie. This story doesn't end. Maybe all the characters die. That's a spoiler for one of the movies. Uh, but Or majority of the characters die. But now that there's a teaser, you know that the story is going to end. There's going to be some type of ending to this and hopefully it's going to be good. To be continued. That is the idea of to, pers to persist. That there is something that is going to keep on, uh, keep on rolling, if you will, in a story or in a book, or maybe in your life. Maybe there's something in your life where somebody said, oh, you just need to give up on that, give up on that dream. But you persisted. There was a to be continued moment and you did continue. Maybe it didn't work out the way that you wanted it to. However, there was a continued moment. In verses 12 through 13, and I can argue that in the entire chapter of Philippians, or in the entire book of Philippians, there is this idea of continuance and perseverance and persistence. Uh, specifically in verse 12 and 13, therefore, my beloved brethren, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. There is this idea of continuance that Paul gives, this idea of persistence. There is a connection also, I believe, between what Paul is talking about in verses 1 through 11 to verse 12, as I've already said, that there is this idea that once a person has the mind of Christ, which is the mind of servanthood, which is the mind of humbleness before God, that, that they have a desire within them to have their lives to be continued. And that is to be continued being, as Paul said, conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. So I want to talk about this idea tonight of to be continued from verse 12 and 13. And this idea centers on the fact of obedience to Christ and becoming more and more Christ-like. So there are three specific elements in verse 12 and 13 that I want to talk to you about continuing in your spiritual journey. The first element is this, and this comes from the first line of, ver of verse 12. Therefore, my beloved brethren, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. I'm taking that as the first part of it. 
I want you to understand this, that continuing in our obedience to Christ and our pursuit of Christ is not seasonal. Continuing in our pursuit of Christ is not something that is designed to be a seasonal element of our life. Now we understand since we have studied the book of Philippians for a number of weeks and if this is your first time looking at uh, with us at the book of Philippians. Uh, just know that this church, as I said at the beginning of this sermon, is a great church. This is an obedient church, and their obedience and their loyalty is not to Paul alone. And it's really not about Apostle Paul because Paul wouldn't put up with that. Uh, it is about their obedience to Jesus Christ. Notice here that Paul uses the word in verse 12. He says the word obey. What he is referring to is they have listened to what Paul taught and then they have went and acted upon that. Look in chapter 1 in verse uh, 27 and 28. Only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of your affairs or, or may hear of your life, that you stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striding, excuse me, striving together for the faith of the gospel and not any way terrified by your adversaries, which is to them proof of perdition, but to you of salvation, and that from God. What Paul is saying is this church is an obedient church to Jesus Christ. Now, Paul is not uh, having the big head here, if you want to say that. Paul understands that what he teaches the church are not things he has come up with. These are the teachings of Christ. These are not Paul's ways or Paul's rules. These are Jesus Christ's ways and how he wants the church. And Paul knows, Paul is humble enough to know that he is just the delivery mechanism of what the Word of God has to say to the church. And this church, as Paul said, was a very good church. They were very, uh, they were an obedient church. In verse fifteen, um, he says they shine as lights. Some translations say they shine as stars. This was a shining example of a church. And let me give a side note, if you will. What we teach as a church is not opinion. What we teach from our classes should not be opinion, should not be just, oh, what I think about this and what I think about this. How we live and how we conduct ourselves are not to be arbitrary rules. I'm not silly enough to, to think that, that I uh, come up with a bunch of things just to, just to give people a to-do or your Sunday school teacher does or, or, some, uh, or other churches. The things that we teach and the things that Paul taught are what Christ taught. And we teach them to others. And that's just a side note that to let you know that Paul was saying that they are an obedient church, but they're not obeying arbitrary rules and legalism. They're following what Christ has said. But, but further in this point, because remember, uh, continuing in Christ is not, this is our first point, is not seasonal. Paul is talking about his, the difference between him being there present with the church and not being present with the church. And Paul said, listen, you are following Christ, not just in my presence, but you are doing it more in my absence. Notice verse 12, but now much more, greater than if I was even there with you, you are following Christ in my absence. This teaches us that continuing in Christ, 
continuing our obedience, continuing our faithfulness is not a seasonal practice. Now, some of you, you may not be big sports fans, but you understand the idea of an off-season an off season and you can even apply this to your favorite television show a lot of times they run for a season and then they're they're off of the season there're no more new episodes that is a time of year when a particular activity usually it's a sport is not engaged uh it, it's not played it's not televised there are seasons in our lives for everything. Remember in Ecclesiastes, the Bible says this, um, that there is a time to laugh and there's a time to mourn. There's a time to reap. There's a time to sow. There's a time to dance. There's a time to refrain from dancing. There's a time to embrace. There's a time to refrain from embracing. There's a time for war. There's a time for peace. There are seasons in our lives. But you know, there is a there is something in our life. There's a, a few things I would you could argue, but there is one main thing that there is never an off season for in our life, and that is for following Christ. There for the Christian, there is never a season in which you lay down your armor, you lay down your Christianity, you act as the world, you do as the world, and then you say, well, it's time for me to to put on my religious gear. There is never an off-season for the follower of Christ. This is why Paul used these words in his writings. I die daily to myself. It is a continuance in our life of dying to our flesh and to sin and following Christ. He also said this, that, that he wants his body, his self, to be a living sacrifice to God because that is his reasonable service, his reasonable act of worship. Paul said to the preacher, uh, in, in the scriptures, and I believe this can apply to us in a variety of ways. He said, be instant, be ready to proclaim the gospel in season and out of season. So that means that Christianity, that following Christ, that obedience is not seasonal. The gospel and evangelism and following Christ is always in season, even when the world says it's not in season. So you've heard of the the Puritans before. Uh, There are great writers of of theology and doctrine and application. And people think that the Puritans were a little bit hard um, on on different issues, but I think it's good for us to to look at the Puritans because, uh, as one writer put it, the Puritans were biblical precisionists. They desired to love God and his word with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. The Puritans believed that all of life, everything in our life, is to be lived for the glory of God and the majesty of Jesus Christ. And so if we take what they said, if we take what the Apostle Paul said, if we do this, then we understand that Christianity is not a season of life. It is all of life. We don't have year eh, two and three. I'm going to be faithful to the Lord and faithful uh, to obey him, to be a part of a church, to do this and that. And then I'm going to take years number four through six off. And I'm just going to live as if I'm not really a part of Christianity and something's happened. Now I'm going to come back to church. Uh, We don't need to be spiritually in trying to make Christianity a season of our life. It needs to be all of life. So let me ask a point of application tonight, and this is just for your own uh, thought. What season are you in spiritually? And we all get in dry seasons. We all get drought seasons. We all get in seasons where the things of life have come upon us, and, and it's difficult 
to follow Christ. I, I'll be very honest. There are times when we get into a what what the church word is a a, a backslidden state, a state of where we're not following Christ as closely as we should. But what season are you in in your life? Is, is Christianity become something that is just a seasonal thing? Or has it been a determined thing in your life that you will continue to follow the Lord? We are in a season where there's a lot of silence in our lives. There is a lot of seclusion in our lives. We, we cannot gather uh, together uh, for our normal worship and normal activities. This is an opportunity for two things. This can be an opportunity to where you become lax in your spiritual obedience and spiritual disciplines. This is an opportunity where it's easy to set aside your faith and what happens, it starts a trajectory that when we start to meet again, when we start to be able to get out and about, that you've become, you've gotten to a new pattern of living. That now this, uh, that yeah, following Christ, is, I know it's important, but there are now other things that have seemingly jumped to a level of importance. Or you can use this season to build yourself up in the faith. One way to do this is to make sure that you set aside time to learn and to grow spiritually in Jesus Christ. Another way, and, and it's here in Philippians, in Philippians 2 and, and verse 4, let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of of others, I want to apply that in a certain way, that we can do our best to encourage each other in our spiritual walk with Christ, to not give up, to keep walking, to continue to be in season. Continuing is not seasonal. Secondly, about continuing, continuing is serious. Continuing is serious, and that comes from Verse 12, the ending of this verse. Now we have to really think it through. Chapter 2, verse 12, it says, But work out your own salvation with fear and with trembling. Work your own salvation with fear and with trembling. That lets us know that continuing is serious. Now this is a very tricky verse especially if you separate it from its context. Now, you could take this and teach this and it become heresy. So you have to be very, very careful how you handle, this is kind of the Bible study portion, this text right here or that line of text. So let me read both of these together. Therefore, my beloved brethren, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, verse 13, for it is God, don't miss this, for it is God who works in you, both to will and to do his good pleasure. So, um, a commentator that I read said it like this. We work because God works. Think about that. We work because God works. So before we tie 12 and 13 together, let me uh, look at that one line for just a second and deal with this phrase. And let us find out what work out your salvation is not saying. What it is not saying. It is not saying, firstly, that you must work to earn your salvation. There are religions, there are denominations that teach you must work in order to earn your salvation. You must do these things in order to have your sins forgiven and to have eternal life. 
let me gently push back on this. Maybe it's forcefully. But if this is how we are saved, by doing these things, and then we receive salvation, then there is no need for Jesus Christ. There is only the need to keep all the rules that God has given. Take the Old Testament and the rules that Jesus has given. And we have to obey them all and then we get into heaven that way. But that's not what it is. Because if that is true, then we are all excluded from eternal life and from our salvation. Because our working is not good enough in ourselves to obtain or even bring about eternal life. So this is not saying you must work to earn your salvation. It's also not saying you must work to keep your salvation. We have been given eternal life as a gift. It is an unperishable gift, uh, imperishable. We have been sealed unto the day of redemption. The Bible says that he who have begun a good work in you, it's in Philippians, will complete it, will complete it at the day of Christ Jesus. We don't we don't obey Christ and follow Christ to keep our salvation. We obey and follow Christ because we love him and his gift of salvation. Now, this is also just because our salvation is secure and it is kept in Christ does not give us a license to do what we please. That's called licentiousness. Uh, that's the big theological term for it. Paul said, should I sin so grace can abound? He said, God forbid. No, I should not do this. So we don't work to earn our salvation. We don't work to keep our salvation. And thirdly, think about this. We do not work, as this text says, or obey, as this, sec as this text says, to appease an angry or a harsh father. Some people have a wrong view of the Christian life. And they have a wrong view of their relationship with God the Father, through God the Son, through the power of the Holy Spirit. They believe that Christ, or let me say it this way, that God the Father accepts them because of what Jesus did on the cross, but God is not happy about it that he really doesn't love them, that he really doesn't care about them. He is just merely putting up with them and their lives. We don't obey Christ because God the Father is angry and that he is harsh and he doesn't love us. You might need a reminder that you are loved by your heavenly Father. And because of Christ, yes, because of Christ, you have been drawn near to God the Father. And He loves you. But we just have to understand what this was not teaching. Let's move on for sake of time. The idea here of working out your salvation with fear and trembling is the idea of uh, one study Bible puts it this way, continually working to bring something to fulfillment or to completion. Believer's responsibility for active pursuit of obedience in the process of sanctification. The word used here in salvation is, uh, is a very, very large term. It's not that moment that you... Uh, just accept the Lord as Savior. The idea of salvation uh, throughout the Bible is you are being saved. It is a continual thing that God does in our lives. But what Paul was trying to teach is that there is a active responsibility on the believer to continue to pursue obedience and their own holiness, and sanctification. Believers also should not have a cavalier attitude towards obedience to, to Christ. We should not do this in our personal lives. Just a, 
uh, uh, you'd say, a flippant attitude towards following Christ. This is important in our personal lives. This is important as a church. There are some churches, and I'm not trying to be disparaging, especially now that we are, are live for anybody to see, but there are some churches, and I've seen them, they are very flippant towards the, the holiness of God and what God requires of us. And that, that God, and I'm not talking about styles of things, I'm talking about in obedience to his word, in teaching the truth of God's word, and, and not being uh, honest and forthright with, with the people. A church should be, should be serious about, about their attitude towards following Christ. It should be personal in each of our lives. It should be corporate. And it should be active in our lives. And notice this. It is with fear and trembling. The idea, one writer puts it, of offending God and a righteous awe and respect of God should be kept in our mind. It is not living a life of fear towards God. We're not saved to be put in a uh, a fear of God. Because what does the Bible say? We have not been given a spirit of fear, but a power and love and of a sound mind. But there is a careful, serious, internal pull to work to at obedience, to take sanctification with seriousness. Is it difficult? Yeah, it is difficult taking it serious sometimes. It is very difficult following Christ sometimes. But you might ask yourself, so what do I do? What, what if I don't know how to, how to do this? How do I know that, that, that I can do this? Or how do I know that uh, this will happen in my life and I will be able to obey and do this with fear and trembling? Because I want to take it serious. I don't want it to be seasonal. Now, we have to see the most beautiful verse that connects with verse 12. And we have to think about it like this. Continuing is supernatural. And I'll, I'll close with this. Continuing is supernatural. For it is God who works in you. Notice this. Both to will and to do for his good pleasure. For it is God who works in you. So you don't know how you're going to do this. You don't know how you're going to uh, uh, obey the way you want to obey, take it serious the way you want to take it serious. The wonderful thing is God is the one who is empowering you. A lot of times we think God is saying, uh, oh, well, look, they missed it. They missed the mark. They don't understand. They can't do it. I wish they would do better because, you know, if they don't do better, they're not going to make, you know, and all this all, all this sort of stuff. No, here's the beautiful thing about Christianity. Because of the Holy Spirit in our life, God is actively empowering us to do what he asks to do the task of obedience. He is being supernatural in your continuing. Notice, he is working. Verse 13, he works in you. The word means, uh, the word work is the idea, of, we've talked about this before, of energizing. John MacArthur says, God energizes both the believer's desires and his actions. How great is that? That God energizes, starts to do work in your life that you would desire to obey and desire to follow him uh, actively in your life. He is giving us the desire to continue and the power to continue. Do you desire to read his word? Do you desire to know his word, not for just somebody else, but for your own soul? Do you desire to pray? Do you desire to have faith? Do you desire to obey? If you do, God is working in you. But let me say this to somebody else 
may be sitting out there. If you have no desire to obey, if you have no desire of the things of God, if you have no desire for the things of his word, if you have no desire to, to, to read his word, if you have no desire to have fellowship with fellow believers, if you have no desire to see souls be saved, if you have no desire to have the conviction of the Holy Spirit tell you where you're wrong in your life, if you feel no remorse for sin, then may I suggest that you might not have ever had God change your heart. You might have trusted religious things. You may have trusted in what you knew of church or you enjoyed the church community, but you've never trusted Christ. The Bible says that when somebody has put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit comes in them and starts to do his work. Why does God do this? Why does God continue this, this supernatural work in our life? Notice this. It is God's good pleasure. When you thank God for helping you, when you thank God for empowering you to obedience, you know what God says? My pleasure. My pleasure. Why is it his pleasure? It is his pleasure because it is for his glory. It is also his pleasure because it is for our good. Right now, let me just ask you, maybe it's just in your mind. Well, why don't you thank God for doing this work. If you're a Christian, if you're feeling this wanting to follow Christ, thank God because that is a sign he is doing work in your life. As the old song says for kids, but it's really for all of us, he's still working on me. You know that song. And right now ask him to increase his work in your life so you'll increase wanting to do his will in your life. Here's the thing. Our lives are all to be continued. We're all still a work in progress. The story of our obedience to Christ is being continued right now. It is supernatural. It is serious. It is not seasonal. But thanks, as Paul says, thanks be to God, we have Christ. Because only through Christ do we have the power to do any of this and it makes us worship him it makes him thank it makes us thank him even more i stand amazed in the presence of jesus Nazarene and wonder how he could love me a sinner condemned unclean singing how marvelous how wonderful and my song shall ever be how marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. For me, it was in the garden, he prayed not my will, but thine. Sweat drops of blood for mine Singing now, marvelous How wonderful am my song Shall it ever be How marvelous How wonderful is my Savior
bird into Calvary and suffered and died. Thanks again for joining us for our Sunday evening service. Uh, I want to end with the word of prayer. And again, I'll wait a few moments. Just put your, uh, if you have a prayer request, please put them in the comment box or fill out that digital connection card if you need a, a private prayer request or don't want us mentioning it online. Uh, but we'll be glad to pray for you. Add your prayer request to the um, uh, to the church prayer list uh, for the comments that I could see. Uh, again, uh, Brother Robert, thank you for joining us. Uh, Melissa, hey Nick, how you doing? Good, to, good to see you, Miss Terry. Thank you so much for um, uh, for that. Glad that blessed you. Uh, thank you for those kind words, and we're glad you joined us tonight. Um, Miss Deidre, how you doing? Uh, glad you joined us. Great suggestion. Hey, Miss Kathy, good to see you. Hope uh, hope you're doing well. If Miss Sandy isn't on there, uh, give her our regards. Um, uh, Gail, thank you for for joining us, Miss Gail, and then uh, Gail Kaysen. Uh, good to see you uh, tonight, Miss Don. How are you, if you um, hey, Brother Noel? Got your prayer request. We're going to uh, pray for Alan uh, here in just a few moments. Uh, Bob and I, Irene. Um, uh, Bob and Irene, they found out they have the virus. Miss Carol, we have that unspoken down. Thank you. Uh, Jim's job, yeah, we want to remember them. Uh, family in Montana, uh, we'll, Miss Sandy, we will remember them. Hey, do this. If you see a prayer request and you promise you'll pray for it, even now, uh, like that prayer request or or give it a heart so they know. Um, uh, so they know that you that you're going to pray pray for that. I know there's a lot of different needs. Um, represented here to this afternoon evening I'm looking uh, looking through making sure I don't miss them if, let's pray for the Jennings family as well uh, if you ha have a prayer request just uh, uh, show uh, write that in there and we'll pray here in just a just a second um, make sure that I I miss it I don't miss it rather okay all right, let's go ahead and, and pray. Uh, let's continue to pray for Paul uh, as well and Rebecca Burney, all essential workers, yeah. Um, and, and again, if you miss uh, Miss Melissa's praise report, it was a wonderful praise report of uh, she's doing well and cancer-free. And we, we continually, we need, we need to re those reminders of God's faithfulness to, to us. Uh, would you um, bow or, or whatever in a word of prayer uh, this evening? Lord, we thank you so much for this evening. We thank you for um, everything that you've done. Lord, we thank you that um, uh, many have joined us uh, tonight uh, online, not only uh, not only those who are members or regular attenders, but friends of our church, we we ask that you would bless all of them. Lord, we we pray that uh, the message that was given will be applied to our hearts and let us follow you even more, uh, even more closely. Um, Lord, we thank you so much for what you've done in many of our members' lives. Um, uh, Lord, we, we thank you for what you're doing in, in Melissa's life. We thank you for that praise report. Lord, we pray for... Um, our brother Paul, we thank you how far you brought him. And so, God, we pray that you would continue to heal him uh, and, and give him strength. Lord, we pray for... Uh, we pray for Sandy and Kathy. We're glad that they could join us tonight. Lord, we pray that you bless them, keep them safe. Lord, we pray for Brother Jim that he might get a new job. Lord, we pray that you would work that uh, to how you'd like that and that um, it would be a, a benefit 
uh, to to him and his family, Lord, for Sandy's family in Montana. We pray that you would continue to be with them for the, all the unspoken prayer requests, for Miss Carol's specific uh, unspoken prayer requests. Lord, we pray for Bob and Irene uh, Hefferman, um, that you would be with them, uh, heal them, help them make it through this, uh, this virus. Lord, we pray for them and, and their family. Lord, we pray for the the Jennings family. Uh, Lord, we pray for the health of everyone in our congregation and in our community. And God, uh, we pray for Miss Rebecca as well. Um, and Lord, we lift her up to you. And Lord, we pray that you would continue uh, to do healing in her life. Again, um, help us to be more faithful followers of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, as we move into Holy Week, throughout the week, there's going to be some devotionals from John chapter 18 and 19, getting up to the resurrection of Jesus uh, that we'll celebrate uh, on uh, on this coming Sunday, Easter Sunday, and we'll do that online, of course. Uh, but we'll have some devotionals throughout the week. And I hope that you join us Wednesday night for our Bible study. Uh, now we pray that uh, God will be with you and will we'll, uh, grant you healing and peace and joy. And thanks for joining us tonight. And if you need us, feel free to reach out to us and uh, we'll do our best to minister to you in any way that we can. Uh, and God bless you. Thank you for joining us tonight.